this is normally the biggest question that I ask people. A lot of people will say to me, well, I don't remember my childhood. I don't know. I'm like, well, okay, that's no problem. What are your patterns right now? And then I'll tell you what happened in your childhood. Do you reject? Do you push away? Do you have no boundaries? Do you maybe allow people too much into your space? All these type of actions and reactions is coming from a wounded aspect, especially if it's causing you pain or discomfort. Hey everybody, welcome to Wisdom from North. I'm Janneke and today you're in for a treat. You're going to meet my dear friend, Evette Rose. Evette is an author, a life coach, trauma release practitioner and personal development teacher. She's the founder of Metaphysical Anatomy and Rapid Growth Healing Technique. And we're so proud to announce that we have just made a seven module course with Evette called Healing Your Child Template, Returning to Your Authentic Self. We're launching this in September 2022, and you're so welcome to check it out. We're also going to have a free live webinar very soon with Evette Rose, where you can learn more about the course itself and also some amazing bonuses that we have for you. You'll find the links below. And today in this interview, we are speaking about the inner child. And I had some aha experiences in this interview. We spoke about how we are affected by our mother's stress in the womb already. We spoke about ensoulment when the soul enters the body. We spoke about inner, different inner child archetypes that we have and knowing what they are can really help us understand ourselves more. And we also spoke about how our relationship to our mother reflects also the relationship to the divine and how we can heal that. So journey with me in this interview and learn more about inner child work and while you're here i would love for you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already you can click the bell then you get notifications of my new videos now let's meet evette rose hello evette how are you doing today welcome Annika, i'm so happy to be here i'm so excited thank you for having me I'm really excited about our collaboration together, Evette. I mean, we've been friends for some time now. You've done three masterclasses for our membership. And I I just wanted so much to make an online course with you because we've started producing online courses on Wisdom from North. And you have so many areas that you can go into. Like your body of work is so vast. And I remember I talked to you uh, and said, I so want to address the inner child. And you also had a huge passion about going into that. So we're yeah. so excited about this seven week online program with you and also the webinar where people can learn about it. And the, the inner child is something we have a um, shared interest about, uh, because to me, when I started to connect and bond more with my inner child, I felt I was becoming more whole and complete. And I came from the place where I thought I had the perfect childhood, no traumas, but why was I struggling? I, I didn't understand. I had the perfect childhood. I was a child star uh, in Norway. But then I started to realize, oh, there's some wounds there. <laughs> there are some in, in the children in me that uh, haven't been acknowledged and have, have been hurt. And I think this is a fact for everyone. So mm -hmm. could you like share your perspective of what is the inner child and what in, is inner child work? I love that question. So <clears throat> basically the inner child is the platform. It's the startup of our being. Like it's almost like when you look at when we are in our mother's womb, right? And she she and she's like, you know, holding the space for us to grow and to mature over the nine months. That placenta is the startup of our being. That is the biology startup, at least. That's what feeds you. That is what gives you the programming and everything and the proteins to for you to develop into the amazing being that you are. But now when I look at the inner child, that is almost like the part of the essence of the spiritual side of us that holds this beautiful innocence, this divine imprint of us. And that is where our platform starts. But then we have this beautiful inner child, meaning the biology of the body. And so we have these two split consciousness that comes together, that has to merge and to befriend one another and learn how to coexist. 
and how to formulate and communicate with each other to start to develop into a being that starts to mature into an adult sense of self. So I don't ever see this startup essence of what we are ever really going away completely or changing into something else. I feel that platform is always there. We always assume that the inner child is this part where we're just a child and we're just playing and we're just having fun and we're just being curious and we don't have any responsibilities. For me, the inner child is also that inner essence of who we began as before we had trauma, before we moved into the body. It's almost like that drop of the soul's essence. For me, these two come together as a beautiful unity. And then as we mature, as the biology meets this, the, sp the spirit, the soul, that beautiful innocence, that inner child that now has to develop. And I say inner child as well, because we have to develop in the, in the sense of the biology, right? The soul has already everything that's perfectly laid out, but the inner child then is birthed into the physical body. And that's now where we can have uh, circumstances that can make or break this experience that can make or break this inner child that has to mature into a sense of adult version of itself as well. And so when I look at why is inner child work important? Well, at the end of the day, when we look at the soul part, which we don't really need to do a lot of work with, is more the biological expression of it, because that's where we feel pain. We don't feel pain in the spiritual essence of it as what we would with the human body. We don't have the ego there. We don't have competitiveness there. We don't have a sense of separateness there. We don't have a neediness, needing to belong all the time or a fear of rejection, right? So now we're dealing with the human side of it, with all these emotions, with all this characteristics that can be good and positive depending on how your life shaped you as you matured as well moving from that inner child that beautiful startup of your being I just love that word the startup of your being because that's really what it is and then everything that we continue to build on top of that is what ends up shaping you into becoming who you are now a lot of us have when we look at the biology or at least I can say the biological inner child right so when we look at that part and where it can become wounded it can have a huge ripple effect on how we make decisions how we bond how we love you sneeze there this is Sorry. great because when you sneeze you have to listen to what i said because there's something in there for you yeah interesting i love it yeah so we were talking about decisions the kind of decisions that we make and how the injured or wounded inner child can deeply affect that right do we make knee-jerk reactions when we have to make certain judgment calls decisions when we look at people or when we try to create something in our lives as well sometimes we carry and bring forward different coping mechanisms that we adapted to during our childhood but because this is so hardwired into the reptilian mind which is which is all about our survival structure right this is the reason why you are still alive today it's because of the wiring of the nervous system and the reptilian mind which is our instinctive responses and so all the memories everything that is wired into this often have a very hard time to adjust as fast as what you can emotionally adjust and heal in your life as you progress and heal. So what normally heals is intellectually we heal and to a certain extent the emotional side as well. However, our instinctive reactions tends to be a little bit slower. Hence why a lot of people we will think, wow, the person's so immature, they, they're so like this, they're so like that. That is actually the injured inner child, the wounded inner child that has not let go of certain coping mechanisms that he or she adapted to during their childhood and maturing into our adult life. I mean, I'm sure you know that person that when you have an argument with them or they do or they say something in the, in the moment of being perhaps upset and you're like, well, you could have handled that a little bit better. That was so immature. That was just so unnecessary. Like you, you're acting like a four-year-old. You know, we've all had people like that that we wanted to say that to. And sometimes it's how we feel, but in a way there's kind of like a bit of a truth within that because the way that they're coping or dealing with the situation is really truly being channeled from that inner child. 
And normally when this happens is because we haven't found that place of safety, that place of being held, supported, understood, or that safe platform to heal for this inner child to realize, but I don't need this anymore. I can rely on the adult self that have learned all these beautiful tools and resources to now know how to cope and deal with challenges and with life itself. So this is why it's so fundamentally important to look at the inner child. How is he or she feeling? How did they cope in the past? How is that being brought forward into your life? Because a big part of our life can actually be driven and, and maneuvered around by the inner child's instinctive responses in terms of how he or she dealt with stress. Awesome. Uh, wow. <laughs> so much there. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it, I, I love it. Uh, so for instance, can we get, you, you gave an example, can we get stuck sometimes? Let's say the four-year-old gets stuck in us uh, and then it keeps coming back. It keeps affecting our lives because something wasn't resolved uh, when we were four years old. Perhaps there was something that happened, a trauma or something that wasn't healed. Then that will just keep coming back and affecting our lives, that four-year-old. That's what it's Absolutely. Said. Absolutely. I mean, just attachment and bonding to mom or dad, that already is huge. How is your need for love met? This is normally the biggest question that I ask people. A lot of people will say to me, well, I don't remember my childhood. I don't know. I'm like, well, okay, that's no problem. What are your patterns right now? And then I'll tell you what happened in your childhood. Do you reject? Do you push away? Do you have no boundaries? Do you maybe allow people too much into your space? All these type of actions and reactions is coming from a wounded aspect, especially if it's causing you pain or discomfort. Of course, if you're comfortable in your life, then it, it means that there's a lot that's coming from the inner child that's, that, that's relatively balanced, that's relatively healthy due to perhaps a, a, a wonderful caretaker that you might have had to help you and support you in your life, where there were maybe trauma points that didn't affect you as much. But when we just look at maybe if your need for love was constantly rejected, there's a high chance that you can go two ways. One is that you're always rejecting people when they want love from you. Or it could be that you're always going to align yourself with people who's going to reject your need for love. So this is an excellent example how the childhood patterns can continue to play out in our lives. Like if you constantly had to work and compete for mom and dad's love, then you're going, always going to find yourself indirectly or directly in friendship dynamics and relationship dynamics, wherever you feel a need for connection, you're going to have to compete for that. And that means you're always going to have someone come into your relationship dynamics and challenge you, or the person might behave in certain ways. It's always going to feel make you feel that you have to work harder. You're never good enough. So these are all excellent examples of how this inner child and the patterns can loop. It can continuously continue to loop back into your life as an adult. And then we spend our whole life on therapy, trying to deal with this and this, this and this, that. But no one's looking at the root causes as to why it's the way that it is. Super interesting. And it's huge. I mean, it's affecting us more than we realize. Uh, and you're saying the root causes. Um, so would you say, because in the course, in the program, the seven weeks program, uh, healing your childhood template, we're actually starting in the womb and you're doing, um, meditation on ensoulment. Would you say that is the root cause? Is that what you mean? Or is it, are you talking about some other root causes? This is an excellent question. And so now I'm going to mention quite a few root causes that can actually come forward here. So first of all, it already starts with ensoulment. And, and what, what is ensoulment for those who wonder about what is that? Exactly. So ensoulment was that moment, that moment before the soul accepted the body, meaning the fetus as its new home, because we move in and out of the fetus during the womb stages. Actually, we still move in and out, in and out, in and out until the soul comes in and is fully like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. And so now we also have to look at 
when the soul comes into the biology of the body and it meets that frequency and it merges with that frequency, the certain decisions are taking place, certain attitudes are being established, certain subconscious decisions without neural, like our neural pathway, cognitive way of thinking is being established as well. So it's also all about the intention and the attitude of the soul as it comes in. It comes in also forward is what do I want to learn in this life? What we think we're going to learn in this lifetime continues to change even while we are going in and out of this fetal stage with the soul. It's always changing. It's not always, well, boom, that's it. Now I'm coming. We're continuously even changing our life path as we're maturing out through our life. The more we find our power and we realize that we have free will, the more we constantly and continuously adapt our life purpose and our path as well. So that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of working with the inner child because we can go back to these fundamental points and we can undecide some things that we've decided. We can undo certain things that we just, that we feel, well, I just don't want to have this, this pattern where I decided perhaps I'm gonna come through this mom who's gonna challenge my self-worth as my inner child and then I'm gonna have these patterns back into my relationships where I'm always gonna be challenged. Well, I feel like I wanna change that now. So this is why in this course, it's such a long course, but it's worth it because it's not just one point. It's not just like where, you, where you're where you like the plumber and you go into the house and just knock the pipe on one end and then boom, 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 the, it unblocks everything. You know, the, the inner child doesn't work that way. There's a process to it. And when you do healing work, don't start backwards. Starting backwards is starting right now. We need to go back, 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 back to the time of the insolvent and then that time when you spent what that you spent that time in the womb because your mother's beliefs values trauma stress and her self esteem and self worth is overlapping into you and this is a biological fact the the placenta is not a barrier between the mother and the child i've been teaching this for 12 years and now Researchers are saying, wow, we found that the protein cells in the lining of the placenta is absorbing all the mother's trauma and stress. Now, the protein cells is an aspect of the placenta. And now why is this so fundamental? Because these protein cells that's part of a bigger structure is responsible for the signals and the messages being sent to your body as to how you should develop. Your motherboard platform that's telling your body how to develop is influenced by your mother's stress. Wow. That's huge. That's huge. So And so where do you stop and start at the end of the day? Because there's such a huge overlap of mom coming over towards you. This is why the inner child, it's so important to look at the womb stages. It's important to look at your dynamic with you and mom separately to the womb stages as well, because that dynamic that starts there, it continues throughout your lifetime. So what can we do about it? Let's say that uh, we were, okay, we understand that we are affected by our mother and her stress and her beliefs. So can you sort of share a little bit about the, the healing process when we have that knowledge? I, I can, but then I will give a lot away what you're going to be finding in this online course because we go straight into that. That is exactly where we're going. We're going to the core wound point and we dive into that and we create the cellular separation of her beingness and your beingness so that it starts to leave more of an authentic blueprint of who you really truly are. When And what does that mean? The inner child's going to shine even more. Because the inner child is not so suppressed by mom's trauma and by her stress and her beliefs and her values. Because her cortisol alone has a huge effect on your development, your, your neurological development, your nervous system development, including your heart and your organs. A lot of children are born with ADHD because of this too much cortisol coming from the mother into the, into the womb. Right. And that has a huge effect on your development. It's causing learning disabilities. It's causing so many aspects that's robbing the inner child from having a wonderful life as a child. And now what happens is, and of course, this is not deliberate, but a lot of children are born with these handicaps because of stress. And it is disrupting this beautiful flow of what we could have had 
in our truest essence as this inner child, untainted by all these external influences. But life has become so stressful that it almost doesn't matter how Zen a mother tries to be, certain things you just cannot control. Even I, when I was when I was pregnant with my daughter Zaya, oh my God, there were moments where things happened and I'm like, okay, this is going to be a trauma. I need to go sit and clear this. I need to figure out, I need to shift and resolve this, you know, because I'm like, I was aware of the impact that certain things could have on her. Yeah, it was tremendous. So basically what we want to do is for the inner child to start to have more experiences in the absence of these external influences that were negative. So that's what we want to do. We almost like want to energetically detox the body, this, the nervous system, the cells, and then ultimately for this inner child to come back into alignment where it can flow into the biology of the body because there are aspects. And I know that you, and I'm sure many other people here watching right now can relate that there have been moments in your life where you feel like, oh my God, I'm so out of my body right now. I'm like, I feel like I'm looking down at my life, right? that is our soul that's the inner child that's going i don't want to touch this body it's too painful i don't want to play i don't want to i don't want to come and explore i don't want to be curious anymore i don't want to ex i don't want to ex i don't want to open myself up for more experiences because it hurts too much the body makes me feel pain now what we want to do is we want to take the pain points out of this so that the soul and the inner child can come through again and play we can be curious again because that's where we have our biggest breakthroughs. That's where we learn. This is where we evolve. That is where we have um, our transformation as well. We are learning as everyone here right now. We're learning and you're here because you're curious. That's your inner child. That is your inner child. If we stop being curious, we stop learning and we stop healing. It's so fundamental as, as an example to see how the inner child's coming forward, we always we always associate or assume the inner child, oh, it's immature, it's erratic, it's it's um knee-jerk reaction type of behavior. No, it's not. We need the inner child in all adult aspects of our life, of course, with certain levels of involvement. But it's so important. So, so important. Even Bill Gates, you know, all these big leaders that have these tremendous big breakthroughs in technology and in life, they have it because they remain curious. That was their inner child. And in this course, I love that you expanded my perspectives around what inner child work really is, because I thought that inner child work was just about healing those parts of ourselves that needed healing, uh, that there's no such thing as time. So I have ha have all these inner children inside of me, but you, you also speak about that pure inner child as a soul, like who you really are. And that's two different perspectives that you are incorporating in the course. And I love that. I love what you just said there because we address both. We absolutely look at the wounded aspect because we look at which archetype are you even as your right. inner child? Was going why? To yeah, like why are you the way that you are? So <clears throat> there we dive into for you to help to see how did you end up being the person that you are and how certain points could have contributed to that. And also it's showing you and telling you there where if you were a certain way and your environment wasn't supportive of that, how that could have had a negative influence on the inner child and how that inner child could now be channeled through into the adult self and how you live your life and the type of decisions that you're also making. So you see how it's not just, <clears throat> we don't just have that, that one point. There's so many aspects coming in to the inner child because this is our life. We don't fix our life in one hour. We don't fix it in one minute. It took us our entire lifetime to get to where we are. I really dived in deep to see where are these bullet points to make it easy for other people to just go straight to that pain point, look at it, talk to it, resolve it, heal it, merge with it, and then move on. What is the next point? Because what I love, what I, what I really focused on during this course is... <clears throat> I made this as lighthearted as I can, as I could, because this is what? 
to the inner child, which means playfulness. What I also love is that you're doing the course with us. So you're actually doing the exercises with us and reflecting what you found. So yeah. how was it like taking your own course, making a course and taking it yourself? Did you feel like a release and a healing as well? I love this question because during this course, I was actually very honest. I was very honest with um, the answers coming up. So whatever I shared there with you, my perspective that I shared there as well was very truly, honestly, what I was feeling. Yes, there were moments where I felt a bit teary or maybe where like, wow, I didn't realize I still had something there. This is like, wow. And, I, and I'm honest, there I tell you guys, I'm like, wow, I'm really feeling this right now. I don't know if you guys are feeling this, but I feel like I've hit a point for me. And this is how I'm feeling it. This is how I'm seeing it. So I'm really sharing with you and I'm breaking down my experience. And the reason why I did that is number one, I have no shame in being vulnerable because number because first of all, we're all humans. And at no point in time that I claim to be Jesus, right? So <laughs> let's just get that out of the way. And I'm very comfortable to express that my emotions are the same as yours. You know, I can also feel pain. I can also feel hurt. There can also be blind spots that I have in my life that I haven't fully addressed. And so for me, it was beautiful and it was wonderful to be able to share that with everyone to say, wow, this I feel really strong in, but this one I really felt. This is where I can feel this pattern came forward. Now I can see when my dad did that, now why I am this way. So all these aha moments where I ask you these deep questions where that end of the day comes full circle where you're gonna have your aha moments. I always shared mine as well. So it's almost like you have an actual buddy with you doing this course. So there will not be one minute where you will be or feel alone because I will be right there with you going through my own process and guiding you, of course, still in a very stead strong way in terms of the, the direction, but just being honest with what I'm feeling as well. Yeah, I just love that. It's actually the first time I've experienced a teacher do that in our courses. Oh, actually, really? <laughs> course themselves, and uh, I have edited it, edited uh, the course and it's just so beautiful to see your aha moments and uh, breakthroughs as well um, I want to jump over to something uh, different uh, in the program you have a module about the father and a module about the mother and I found it so interesting uh, that you said that if you feel a strong disconnection to the divine like a separateness then this might have to do with your mother that they are very yeah. connected and that was they a are. part for me and i would love for you to share a little bit about that i would love to so this is something that i discovered in myself and i thought I'm like, wow, this is powerful. And the more I started to talk to other people and the more I started to dive into helping other people with their inner child and how they saw life, I realized that this is a bit of a pattern that we all share. And the reason is when we are in the womb, your mother is your first reference. Her breathing, her tummy rumbling when she's hungry, her heartbeat, her voice, and the vibration of her voice when she would speak. When she sleeps, her routine, it's like you're one. You're synced into one being. There's no sense of separateness. Now, when we are engulfed in that space, which is mom, her energy is the beginning and it's the end. You have no higher reference. But now when you are born, we feel that separation. And the moment when we feel that separation, we have a strong desire for that for that um, that separation, for the connection to be reestablished. Hence, why of course we cry. There's a sense of neediness when when mom holds the child and the child calms down because oh, I'm back, I'm I'm back I'm back to my unit, right? That sense of separateness is not there anymore. And mom is giving you food. She's she's meeting all your basic needs for survival and at that small age we're all about survival there's no hippocampus there's no emotional brain getting involved with you know debates or emotional experiences it's, it's all about just i'm hungry 
my stomach is hurting. I need to sleep. I need to be soothed. I need to be cuddled. I need to be held. I need to feel safe right now. And she meets all those needs. That's a lot of power. And we rely on that. And we expect that. And we start to get used to that. So now what ends up happening is so much of our happiness and our power indirectly, subconsciously is with mom. And that is why it hurts so much. If she rejects you, it hurts deeply. It shakes the core essence of your being. And that's because now we see mom as like this godlike figure that has the power to do everything. And the more we mature, the more we start to realize, okay, that sense of separateness is normal. It's okay. We kind of like ease into it. It takes us at least four to five years to really ease into that from my research. And where, where, where a person or a child can actually stand and say, I feel good in myself. I feel, I feel steady in myself, in my sense of self. Now, God is also very much, it has a very similar tone, a very similar role where God has all this power over our life, or at least that's what we perceive it being until we find our own way or our own values and beliefs. It depends also what is projected onto us. But it's also this power that we always have been a part of, right? We've always been a part of God, but our body gives us that sense of individuality, that sense of separateness. So the more we accept and move into our individuality, the more we feel the separation. But the more we feel the separation and the absence of this connection, what do we want? We want more of it. Hence why we're on this journey seeking that divine connection because we haven't fully integrated with our individuality, meaning the physical body and the illusion that the consciousness of the biology creates a sense of separateness. So the soul is still trying to adjust and communicate, but we're not separate. We're okay. We're here. We're here with that. It's tough. It's a tough transition. And it's a transition that most people don't fully, fully integrate by the time when they pass over. And in the program, yes. you're having a meditation where we're actually healing the relationship with mom. Yes, exactly. We heal it with mom. We do the same with dad. All these points are, are very fundamental because even alone, when you just look at your dynamic with dad, dad is biologically speaking, the leader, the breadwinner. I mean, this is how the biology perceives that even though your upbringing might be different or you might've seen a different, it doesn't change the ancestral programming and predispositions of the biology of the body. In the body, we perceive that as this protector, right? That is meant to bring stability. He's the stabilizer. And the more stable a father figure is, the more confident and strong we feel within ourselves, the more sense of self we have. So you see how mom and dad actually play a beautiful role in your life. As you transition from mom, it's almost like dad's there to catch you and say, well, you can be strong and independent on your own. I am here I'm, and I'm going to show you how to do that. If that's traumatized, that's now where you're going to have someone that has a very challenged self-esteem, a huge sense of vulnerability and an oversensitivity to circumstances that of course will challenge their weaknesses or at least their perceived weaknesses because they don't know how to stand and stay strong and stable within themselves. So let's say someone does not have a dad, uh, let's say even a, a donor child, what would they do in that meditation? Uh, or maybe the dad has passed away. That's a great question. So there we can connect to the divine father. Ah, okay. So we connect to the father's soul because that's always there. Whether he's physically there or not, the soul essence is always there. And how do we connect to that essence? Well, half of him is in you. Right, right. That essence is already there. Yeah. And it's about bringing back that understanding and that memory of, well, 
he's right here. So this is a really, and I love that question that you ask. I mean, it's very important to ask that question, but absolutely if, and, and because some people say, well, what if I don't want to connect with my dad? What if I just really don't like my dad? And that's a valid question. That's why I love to talk about the divine father. And we do bring in the divine father during the meditation and the divine mother. Right. We can do the same with the divine mother if we don't have Just in case there was trauma with that and you're not ready to deal with it. That's okay. And going a bit back, I wanted to hear a little bit more about the child, uh, inner child archetypes, because I found that was very interesting. So can you explain what an inner child archetype is and you don't have to go through all of them because we're doing that in the course but mention a few examples so we can understand what th that might be because i'm curious about whether that is something we're born with or if it's developed um through our lives i love that so this is something that we're actually born with and it normally comes forward also from a lot of beautiful positive predispositions that comes from our ancestry good qualities from mom and dad it also comes through and of course we bring our own essence into that so a big part of what our life purpose and mindset is in terms of the inner child the divine inner child before merging into the biology of the body that essence that would that is normally what you will see in the child's archetype if it's not too wounded you can still see it beautifully coming through. Now, I'm going to use my daughter, Zaya, as, actually as an example. Now, of course, she, you know, I didn't get the whole pregnancy thing right. <laughs> so there are aspects where I can see where I'm still working with her to try to undo or rewind certain points where I had a lot of stress. And I can see the stress and the type of stress that I had and how it's actually coming through in her quite accurately. And what I'm seeing with her, she's what's called like the nature child. Right. So she's the, the airy fairy child that if she is walking around, she'll gravitate to rocks and leaves and, and stones and, and, and sticks. Everywhere she goes, she either has a leaf or a rock or a stick in her hand. Like people will also see this on social media, like post a lot of these photos of her like that, because this is how she connects. This is just her essence. She'll sit there and dig into the soil and with the plants and the flowers. There's always a flower in her hand. That's who she is. When we go to cities, she's the child that will walk on the concrete street. And when she finds a rock, she'll pick it up. She'll pick up the rock. She'll pick up the leaf. And I've had people saying things, really mean things to me in the street. Like, can't you give her better things to play with? And I will not publicly say what my response was, but the mama in me came out because I will not allow sleepwalkers to ruin the innocence that she's exploring don't interfere with that let just let that be yes she has her toys and her stuffed animals and her cow that she absolutely loves you know stuffed animals but this is her essence this is where she she just radiates this beautiful essence of you can feel how connected she is and the moment we go to cities the moment we're in areas that doesn't reflect the jungle, which we have here in Bali, the rice paddies and everything, the switch in her personality is, is very evident. She's stressed, she's irritable. She, she, you can feel her, her body is searching for connection with nature. It needs that. It's almost like her soul feeds off of that. That's her platform. That is her, her where she's plugged into the grid, you know? So this is a really great example. What about you? Do you know your inner child archetype? Is that also an inner child or? That's, I think she gets it from me, to be honest. Yeah. I talk a lot about this in my autobiography as well. You know, I played with, you know, insects and scorpions and beetles. They would be in my bed. I would sleep with them and the house would be screeching. You know, the screeching sound that crickets make at night sometimes because they were in my room. Like they were sleeping there with me. They were my friends. And this is how I, <laughs> and this is how I played. I was full of dirt every single day. And as long as I was home before before sundown, my mom couldn't care less where I was. Do you have some other examples of inner child archetypes, what that can be? Absolutely. So we could also have, here's the one that can maybe be a little bit more wounded. We have the one that's a pleaser, 
right? So we can have one that's a little bit more focused on making other people happy. And that's because they are emotionally invested in seeing other people happy because when other people are happy, then they feel they have a sense of purpose. They are important. They are validated. But also when people are happy, the child gets the connection that he or she wants. So they start to associate and adapt to having to do something, meaning adapt my sense of self to make someone else happy so that I can have the emotional needs met that I want and need. So is, that's another example also of that. So is the intention then uh, to find the balance within your own archetype in a sense? It Yes, it is. But it's also about understanding it because awareness of a problem is a problem half solved. So the better that you can understand why you behave the way that you do and where the weaknesses are and why the weaknesses are there. Now we can actually establish and find them much easier in our day-to-day -day life and start to recognize, well, okay, now I'm behaving in a way that is more from a place of feeling a bit wounded due to maybe having some rejection trauma coming up or attachment trauma coming up rather than being and realizing, well, now I'm actually in the flow with my real true archetype. That makes sense. And in the program, you're going through all these archetypes and we're finding out what our own archetype is. Exactly. Um, just to wrap this up, uh, you've talked a lot about it, I think, but just for people to really understand what is the benefit with really diving this deep and doing such a course? Because sometimes it may feel like, oh, am I going to dive this deep? Can I do it? Uh, it seems a bit like heavy going back to my childhood, uh, meaning my inner child. What is really the greatest benefit of doing this? I love that question. And first of all, number one, I'm right there with you. I'm going through this with you step by step. I'm your facilitator and I'm also your exercise buddy. And secondly, I actually deliberately designed this course to be very gentle and to be very graceful. I am, and, and Yannick, you probably would know that from a lot of my work and research and videos that I make and put out there on social media quite a lot. I'm very against having to relive trauma. I, I speak out quite strongly about it. So I can assure you that you will be doing this powerful course with someone that is not going to cause you or do anything that would bring up pain points to the point where you can't handle it. That is not the purpose of healing. I truly believe that healing is meant to be graceful, gentle, and easy. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that because I have done a lot of inner child work and I know where the pitfalls are. I've seen other people where the pitfalls are. So I've set this up for you in a very gentle way that can just make you feel that your hand is being held and someone is walking through this process with you. Because that is the absolute best way for us to heal is when we have a compassionate witness. That is how we actually become resilient in the face of trauma. This is the most powerful way to overcome trauma. Wow. Thank you so much for this, uh, Yvette. And I'm really excited for people to experience both the course and we're also going to have a free webinar that I mentioned, Healing the Blueprint of Your Inner Child. There you have the chance to learn more about this, learn more about the course. We're going to dive deeper about the inner child. And you also get the chance to ask Yvette direct questions if you show up live. So I'll put yeah. both the links below to the webinar and to the course. And I'm really, really Looking forward uh, to more people uh, experiencing this and diving deep into the inner child. It's such a profound work, and I love what you do. This is just one, you know, one part of your work. You're doing so many amazing things, mm -hmm. uh, and your knowledge is so vast. I'm just so amazed. So, I'm really honored to have you on board as one of our teachers, Yvette. And thank, thank you for, you for being... having me back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Yannick, and thank you, everyone. Take care and much light from Bali and Norway. Bye-bye. 
Hi everybody, thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it, please subscribe and like the video or comment below and let me know what you think. And I would also love for you to check out my other videos on YouTube or wisdomfromnorth.com. See you in the next video.